AC motor controllers are devices or groups of devices that control and protect the operation of AC motors. For example, a controller can start and stop a motor and change its direction, all while protecting the motor from being damaged by excessive levels of current or low levels of voltage. Since your job includes maintaining motor controllers and correcting any problems that arise, you need to be thoroughly familiar with AC motor controllers and how they operate. Perhaps the simplest way to control a motor is manually. Manual control can be accomplished by using switches. Another common type of manual control switch is toggled instead of pushed to open or close contacts. Moving the switch to the on position closes the controller's contacts. Moving the switch to the off position opens the contacts. An operator must be at the location because the push button or switch of a manual controller directly controls the flow of current from the power supply to the motor. A manual controller is usually located near the motor it operates. This way, an operator can make sure that the equipment is operating properly and can take action to correct any problems that occur. Another common way that an AC motor can be controlled is by using magnetic controllers. Magnetic controllers move contacts by means of electromagnetic switches instead of push buttons or other switches. One type of electromagnetic switch used in magnetic controllers is a contactor. Generally speaking, a contactor is an electromagnetic switch in a controller that directly controls the power to a motor. When the contactor is energized, an electromagnetic field moves an armature that closes sets of contacts to complete a current path from a power source to a motor. One of the advantages of using a contactor is that it can be energized from a remote location using a voltage that is lower than the voltage that is used to energize the motor it controls. This way, the person operating the motor does not have to get close to high voltage when they start and stop high voltage motors. Other electromagnetic switches used in controllers are usually called relays. The construction of contactors and relays is basically the same. In general, though, relays are smaller than contactors and carry less current. In this part, we'll look at a typical magnetic contactor used in AC motor controllers and see how it operates to complete or interrupt the circuit between a power source and a motor. A magnetic contactor is a key part of any magnetic motor controller because it directly controls the power to the motor. Most magnetic contactors have three sets of contacts, one for each phase in a three-phase AC circuit. A contactor may also have additional sets of contacts called auxiliary contacts. Auxiliary contacts are usually attached to the armature and operated by it. These contacts are used to perform auxiliary control functions, such as providing current for indicating lights, like the ones used to indicate whether a motor is on or off. Additional components commonly found in AC motor controllers are pilot devices. Pilot devices are electromechanical devices that can be used with motor controllers for a variety of functions. For example, a pilot device can be used to sound an alarm or to protect a motor that a controller operates. A pilot device is activated by specific changes in the system in which it's placed. When it's activated, it usually either completes or breaks the circuit from the power supply through the M coil of the controller's contactor. Now, in addition to responding to changes in level, there are pilot devices called pressure switches that operate to open and close a switch in response to changes in pressure. For example, a pressure switch can be used to stop the operation of a compressor when the pressure of a gas in a storage tank has reached a desired level. Another commonly used pilot device is a limit switch. Limit switches are mechanically operated devices that open or close circuits when a mechanical mechanism reaches its limit of travel. This limit switch has a lever arm that's placed so that it protrudes from its casing. When the equipment being monitored reaches its preset limit of travel, it pushes the lever arm. The lever arm, in turn, activates the opening of one set of contacts, stopping the motor and closing another set of contacts, which results in the motor operating in reverse. Sometimes, a motor's operation is triggered by changes in the flow of a liquid or vapor. In these cases, a pilot device called a flow switch can be used. 
A flow switch is a mechanical device that opens or closes a circuit in response to changes in flow. Another commonly used type of pilot device is a thermostat. Thermostats are devices that sense changes in temperature. Thermostats can be used to open or close circuits when temperature reaches a preset point. Two common types of thermostats are the bellows type and the bimetallic strip type. In contrast to a bellows thermostat, which may have its sensing bulb located some distance away from the contacts, a typical bimetallic thermostat is located close to the contacts it operates, and it senses temperature at that location. All the examples of pilot devices we've looked at so far have used contacts to make or break a circuit. Another device that can be used instead of contacts to make or break a circuit is a mercury switch. Motors are rated to deliver a certain amount of power. If demand on the motor increases, current flow through the motor increases. If the current is allowed to exceed the rated capacity of the motor, it can cause serious damage to the motor's windings. To prevent such damage from occurring, overload devices are installed in most AC motor controllers to protect the motors from excessive current. Whenever an excessive current condition occurs, an overload device opens the circuit that supplies power to the M-coil in the controller's contactor. The de-energized M-coil opens contacts in the motor controller, interrupting current flow to the motor and the motor stops. Now that we've looked at thermal overload devices, let's look at a typical magnetic overload device. You may also hear magnetic overload devices called magnetic overload relays. When the voltage supplied to a motor drops, the motor can maintain power only if current increases. If voltage gets too low, the increased current could seriously damage the motor. In this part, we'll look at different ways that AC motor controllers can protect a motor from problems associated with low voltage. The last type of low voltage protection we'll look at is a low voltage or LV relay. An LV relay is an electromagnetic switch. It has an operating coil that becomes an electromagnet when current flows through it. When a typical AC motor is first started, current is three to five times higher than the motor's normal operating current. This surge of current could trip the power supply and in some cases may damage the motor's windings or the cables leading to the motor. In this part, we'll look at a reduced voltage start AC motor controller that can protect a motor against these current surges. Reduced voltage start motor controllers generally use resistors in series with the motors they control. The resistors increase the resistance in the motor circuit, which reduces the level of current during motor startup. After the motor is started, the resistors are bypassed, usually by means of an auxiliary circuit. The most common type of speed control provided by AC motor controllers is step speed control. With step speed control, a motor has determined or set speeds. One example of step speed control is a two-speed motor that has two sets of windings wound in one stator. The two sets of windings are controlled like two separate motors. In this part, we'll look at typical diagrams and charts that can be used to help maintain and troubleshoot AC motor controllers. Specifically, we'll look at examples of a schematic diagram and a wiring diagram. We'll also look at two types of charts, a legend and a sequencing chart. Schematic diagrams are diagrams that use letters, lines, and symbols to identify components and show how they're connected electrically. You can use a schematic of an AC motor controller to become familiar with the controller's components and how they operate. This is a schematic diagram of a typical AC motor controller. The controller has a motor or power circuit that provides power to the motor and a control circuit that can open or close the power circuit. A power source, which is not shown, is connected to line leads labeled L1, L2, and L3. The line leads are connected to three main contacts, which are each labeled with the letter M. These main contacts are normally open. The main contacts are connected to three overload devices, which are connected to three motor leads labeled T1, T2, and T3. The motor leads are connected to the motor. A step-down transformer is also connected to the power circuit. 
The transformer lowers or steps down the voltage used in the power circuit to a lower value that is used to operate the control circuit. The connections to the high side of the transformer are labeled H1 and H2, and the connections to the low side of the transformer are labeled X1 and X2. The transformer is connected to a pair of fuses labeled F1 and F2, which protect the motor controller from short circuits. If a short occurs, the fuses will blow, causing opens in the control circuit. The fuses are connected to stop and start buttons and to overload contacts. The overload contacts, which are labeled OL, are normally closed. The start button has maintaining contacts, labeled M. The maintaining contacts are auxiliary contacts operated by the M coil, which is also in the control circuit. All of the contacts labeled M are operated by the M coil. On this diagram, electrical connection points are indicated by numbers. The start button and the maintaining contacts are electrically connected to the control circuit at connection points 1 and 2. And the control circuit is connected to the X2 side of the transformer through fuse F2 at connection point 3. These numbers can be used as a reference when troubleshooting a controller, as we'll see later. Pushing the start button energizes the control circuit, including the M coil. When the M coil is energized, it closes all of the M contacts and power can flow to the motor. In this example, the start button is designed to be pushed in and released. After the start button has been released, the maintaining contacts, labeled M, remain closed to maintain current flow to the M coil. If an overload occurs, the overload devices open the overload contacts. Opening these contacts opens the control circuit, which stops current flow to the M coil. When the M coil is de-energized, the M contacts open. As a result, the path for current flow to the motor is interrupted and the motor stops. In order to stop the motor during normal operation, the stop button is pushed. Pushing the stop button opens the control circuit which stops current flow to the M coil. The de-energized M coil opens the M contacts, interrupting the path for current flow to the motor, and the motor stops. For example, this wiring diagram represents the same components as the schematic diagram we looked at a moment ago. The motor, or power circuit, is represented by the heavy lines, and the control circuit is represented by the thin lines. The box on the wiring diagram represents the controller's physical enclosure. In this example, the fuses and the step-down transformer are located outside of the controller's physical enclosure, so they do not appear on the wiring diagram. The line leads and the motor leads are labeled the same way on the wiring diagram that they are on the schematic diagram. However, on the wiring diagram, the for example, the H1 side of the transformer is connected to line lead L1 here, and the H2 side of the transformer is connected to line lead L2 here. There are actually six sets of main contacts in this controller, so the wiring diagram represents six sets of contacts. In the schematic, the six sets of contacts were represented by symbols for only three sets of contacts, because sets of contacts work in pairs. The overload devices are labeled OL and are numbered 1 through 3, as are the overload contacts. The stop and start buttons for the controller are not shown on this wiring diagram because these buttons are not physically located in the cabinet that houses the controller. However, the electrical connection points for the start switch and its maintaining contacts are indicated on the diagram by the points 1 and 2. These numbers correspond to the numbers on the schematic diagram, and they can be used as a reference during troubleshooting. As on the schematic, the M coil is represented on the wiring diagram by a circle with the letter M inside of it. One side of the M coil is connected to maintaining contacts and the start button at connection point 2. Although the maintaining contacts are in the control circuit, they are represented with heavy lines. This is because, like the main contacts, they are operated by the M coil. 
There are two sets of maintaining contacts in the controller, so the wiring diagram represents both sets. The other side of the M coil is connected to the three overload contacts. From the overload contacts, a wire connects the control circuit to connection point three. Connection point three indicates where the control circuit is connected through fuse F2 to the X2 side of the transformer.